Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are going to be going through my whole Chanel collection. I'll be swatching everything for you. So if you'd like to see that, please keep watching. Let's go ahead and start with blushes. So I don't know if I have these in any particular order, but the first one I have, this is actually the Illuminating Blush Powder, the new one, and it's more like a highlighter. So it's a beautiful warm golden shade, Pearl de Lumiere. I don't pronounce most of these because they are in French and I don't want to get them completely wrong. So I'm gonna show you the back here. So this is the inside of it. It is a really very soft highlighter, nothing too intense. Really pretty though. I have it on today on my cheeks. I applied it with a brush, so I didn't mix it with a balm this time. So I applied over a blush. I also did add it to the inner corner there and a little bit on my lid. Next up we have this blush, which was from The Holidays. Here's the inside. It actually looks quite tan on. It looks like sun-kissed actually. Um, you can see there's a, just a hint of like a brownish tone in there. And then we can't go by without talking about this blush. This is the most recent one, the Fleur du Printemps. And then again, the inside. So you can see there the vibrancy of that blush, especially compared to the holiday one. It just is such a pretty one. It's like a corally salmony shade. That's actually the blush that I have on now. So I have that on now with that first highlighter, both together. I think those are my two favorite newer products that Chanel has recently released. Now we're getting into blushes from their permanent collection. So we have 64 Pink Explosion. And actually, I think someone asked me this question. They wanted this compared to the other one I just watched. So we'll get to see those side by side. Okay, so this is in English, so I can read it pretty well. So it's Pink Explosion 64. You can see on the inside, it does have a bit of like a silvery kind of shimmer to it. And I was worried you could see those individual particles, but you can't actually see them really, really distinctly once this is on. It just has a beautiful glow about it. One of my new favorite blushes. Then we've got this one, which is in O2 Rose Bronze. So I'll show you the back of it just so you can see the label and everything. Here's the interior. Now this one surprised me because it looks like it would be warm, but once you put it on, it has the cool, shimmery unicorn element to it that I was not expecting. So that's one of the reasons I don't pull for this one as much because the blush itself looks warm, but then the actual shimmer in there is more cool toned. Unique in that way, I haven't seen anything like that before. Okay, next up we have, this one is 68. This is one of my hardest working blushes because it's the least shimmery, the least reflective of any of the blushes. It's the most matte. It's not totally matte. I put a flashlight on this and there's still a little element of shimmer in there, but it's really undetectable once it's on the skin. I love to layer this one. Typically I'll put this one down as a base and then I'll go ahead with one of the more shimmery blushes and add it right in this area, but it will be number 68 as most of the cheek. This one is 99 Rose Patel. This one has a beautiful sheen to it. I think it's such a pretty one. Maybe one that I would like to use more. I haven't had a chance to, but this is one that I really need to use and pull for a little bit more. I think I love most of my Chanel blushes. I mean, I can't think of a powder blush that I don't love. Okay, we've got number 440 Quintessence. It's one of the bolder blushes that I have. And again, I love using this as a pop of color on the cheek. This has the intensity to me of something like Pink Explosion, but on the warm side. Then we have here number 80, Jersey. And this is one I looked at for a while, wondering if it was going to show up on my skin tone. I just thought it was so pretty, kind of like a muted apricot shade. But I was pleasantly surprised when I had a chance to actually purchase this and try it on. It is one of the most beautiful blushes, really soft, understated blush, especially if you're doing something like a really smoky eye or something really bold. I think this is a nice blush to pair that with. Then we've got here Evening Beige, which I think is also another beautiful apricot-y kind of blush. It has a very beautiful shimmer to it, which is nice and warm. 
I can see why they named this evening beige though because it does have something like a sunset quality about it. Then we've got this blush. Oh, I actually think these are going up. I didn't do this on purpose, but again, in intensity, it's a little bit more warm. This one is 55 in love. Here's the insides. You can see that it does have, again, quite a nice sheen to it. Nice and even. This next item is something that is such a hard worker in my entire makeup collection in general. It's the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. And I had the question, what is this actually? So I looked online because they used it for so many different things. And according to the Chanel website, it says a light to medium coverage foundation with a gel texture and pigmented micro droplets that create a radiant, healthy looking glow. How it's been explained to me is that these are little like pockets of powder suspended in a gel water. And then as you apply it, those little bits of powder burst and then become one with the element that they were suspended in. I use this as a primer. I will mix it in with foundation. I also use it as a fix it if you haven't seen that yet. Can't remember which video it's in, but <laughs> trust the process. It looks worse before it gets better. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go see the video. But I do have this in the shade medium. Now this cute little packet is the samples of all of the shades. So I'm going to swatch all of the shades for you. This is one of the hardest items to select a color on, I think. So I will go ahead and swatch all of them for you. Here they all are. One other thing you can do with this, and I thought this was such a great idea because I feel like Chanel's bronzers aren't very expansive. You can pick one of these as a bronzer shade as well, because once this is in place, it doesn't move around on the face. So what a great idea to use as bronzer. I spoke to a makeup artist who gave me that tip. So I thought it was such a great one. So I'm trying to decide which one to purchase for a bronzer. We have the shades light, medium light, medium, medium plus, light deep, and deep. Then we have the two newest shades, medium deep and deep plus. So I wanted to separate those to let you know that these are new. So since I have those on my arm, I thought I would do the complexion products. That way you can kind of look at them compared to these. In case you have any of these, this might help. So I have the Le Beige. This is the Healthy Glow Foundation. And this is a little bit too dark for me right now because I'm inside so much. So again, we'll look at this product in a few different shades. I thought I'd leave the current Water Fresh Tint shades up so you can compare. This is BD41. This is 50 Beige, which is too cool for me. It looks actually a little bit muddy on me, so this warmth is good. And then this is BD51, which is a bit too tan for me right now. Probably a better summer shade for me. For complexion products, I also have this Le Beige Sheer Healthy Glow Moisturizing Tint. It's a little bit cool for me, but again, it'll give you a good idea kind of where everything falls. So this is in Medium Plus. And now we'll take a look at this product. I have mine again in Medium Plus. And here is Medium Plus. So here's the difference between Medium Plus and my current Best Match. BD41, as well as what I use here, which is medium, but I'm going to be looking at some of these other shades as well. Um, maybe this one, I'll try it, and then I'd like to pick up a bronzer shade as well, maybe this one. Then complexion-wise, I also do have this. It's the Essential Palette, this one right here. And I looked at the other two, I was trying to find something a little bit peachier. This is just slightly cool for me, um, or at least something with a blush that's warmer. What I've been told about this product is that it's like a deconstructed foundation. So if you think about the prescriptive days, and I believe Prescriptors was the company by Diane von Furstenberg and Sylvie Chantekai. And if you remember that, they had colors that they would mix so you could get a customized foundation. So this is kind of that idea. What I heard is that for fashion shows, they would just have a few of these palettes be able to custom mix on the spot for different models and blend all of these together. So I kind of cleaned mine up because I was trying to play around with that idea of mixing everything together and kind of customizing. This doesn't have the right undertone for me though. So um, I, I'm not quite sure that either of the other ones will either, um, but I really, really love the idea. And this is a great consistency. So if this is a good color match for you, 
that really stays in place all day long. This, in terms of a concealer too, I noticed the texture is a little bit drier, but it does stay in place. It doesn't really move around during the day either, so I just wish I could find a better color match. I went ahead and swatched that palette up here because it was running out of room, and I thought you could compare this as well with these other shades here. So we have the Complexion product, we have the blush and the highlighter, and the highlighter is a really nice, beautiful glow. So I hope that helps out in terms of determining any shades in case you were wondering what to pick up. I hope this video is not too long because we have still a lot to go through. I'm gonna talk a little bit faster and then swatch them kind of in groups because I think that's what's taking a long time. First we've got this one, 266. It's the Tisse Essentiel. The back here first so you can take a look or take a snapshot if you want. And then I'll show you the inside. And then here's the inside. One of you let me know this is a matte palette. It has a bit of a sheen to it still. So it's an interesting combination that I don't typically see, but I really like it. The only difficult thing in this is that this shade right here is a little bit tricky to work with. It takes a little bit more work to blend it. Then we've got 226 Tissé Rivoli. This is one of my newest favorite palettes. I have it on now. Every time I wear it, I get a question about it. So if you were ever thinking about this one, I think it's such a great one. And then here is the inside. So it has a beautiful sheen, a beautiful finish to it. It's much creamier. I expected the Tissés to be very similar, but they're not. So I actually have another one. Actually, it's right over there. I haven't opened it yet, but it's my palette for March. So I'll be adding another one in March. And so easy to work with that deepest shade. It's really gorgeous. And then here we have 308 Clara Obscure, which is the matte palette. And I think this is a great basic one to have because it covers so many bases in terms of getting that crease color. If you want to anchor something with a matte, this is a great one to go to. So if you don't already have 308 and you're looking for something to serve as a matte, then this one is really beautiful. Next up we have here Road Movie. I love this palette. I think it's one of the most fun palettes I have and some of the most intense colors. I just wish I had time to use it more because that teal is so, so stunning. I love it with that coppery gold color. Then we've got 334 Modern Glamour. I think this is perfectly named because it is a very glamorous palette. I feel like it's perfect for evening events. So if you want to really go glam, I think this is a great one to pull for a really elegant smoky eye. This might not be something I would wear all the time, but it's definitely a staple. Next, I have one of the blurry palettes. I have a couple of them. This one's 322 Blurry Gray, which is another beautiful, neutral palette. I think after the Tissé series, I will finish up with the Blurry series as well. You can see the grays are really soft though. Nothing too harsh and there's like a little bit of a red tone in that one in the lower left. 318 Blurry Green is next and again, another one that I love that I don't have really an opportunity to use as much, but I think that this one is also really beautiful. Let me know which blurry palettes so you would like to see more than others because I'll get those first. We also have 268, which I've had for a long time. I remember when this one was really, really difficult to get a hold of and then it finally came back into stock. Can't actually recall how long I've had this, but it is a really great matte palette in case you were looking for more matte shades to go along with 308. This is 362 and it's part of the same family as the last one I just showed you. These are meant to work together because when you look at this one, you can see that there's just a lot of pink <laughs> and sometimes it's a little tricky to work with. There's that beautiful brown shade, which I actually like quite a bit. I have a few of the single eye shades here. So I have from the year before, not this past holiday, but before that, I have 56 Grandeur. I also have, 925 or antique so it was another gold color you'll see in a moment how they're different gold so then i also have 927 which looks a lot like the blush but it's not exactly the same as that then we have 928 which i think is a great versatile shade it works with a lot of different eyeshadows to intensify I like it in the outer corner here we've got 56 here this is one of those shades that I needed to use more. Looks like some of the patterns worn off there, so I must have used it a little bit at least. Here it is. It's got a bit of an orangey marigold kind of shade to it. 925 here. 
You can see this is a much cooler gold shade. Here's that beautiful 927. Has that chain pattern as well. We've got it right here. These are definitely shades I would love to use more once I find some time. 928. Does have a bit of a greenish tone to it. Here's that shade. You can see on it doesn't have that greenness to it. It's more of a brown, but there's definitely that element. And then I have four of these, which I love because they serve as eye crayons. You can go in the waterline, you can use them as eyeliners. And I have them in 12, 40, 38, and 36. It's a really great one and done products. This is number 36 for Contour Mauve. This is number 38, Burgundy Pearl. This is number 12, it's completely matte, which I like about it. It is Contour Clar. This last one is probably my most used of all of them. It is number 40, which is one of the new ones as well, in Beige Pearl. Okay, moving on, I have some like balms and actually I have one cream blush. So I have a cream blush in number two. So this shade right here, I they're not my favorite though because they lift my foundation and concealer right up here in the front. So that's why I don't pull for that one that much. And then I also have multi-use stick balm in rosé, which I also don't use that much, but I love it because I think it gives such a beautiful glow. These aren't sticky, but they definitely don't dry down. And then we have this one. I love this in golden tan. It looks really great in the summer with a more golden look. And then I also have this newest one, which is the more translucent one. This is the one where you can convert your powder blushes to your cream blush. You just take your powder blush, get some on your fingertips, and then you go ahead and incorporate it right here. So you're not mixing it in the blush, you're mixing it right here. And then you can just dab it on your cheeks. I have demoed that in a previous video. It works really well. That blush number two. Then we've got the golden tan balm, the rosé balm. And then we have that last one, which is the more universal. That one is in pearlescent. Okay, I think I've been at this for two hours now. So that's how long it's taking me to go through everything. So I really hope I can edit this down so it's not a two hour video. I'll go a little faster. And then eyebrow pencil, 810. I love it. I have it on now. Great color. I also have this Le Beige Healthy Glow Luminous Color. This is in medium light. This one right here, and you can see it's got a peachiness to it. I always go for a peachy shade. There is a bit of shimmer there. You are going to get a little bit of a glow. I'm really careful about not putting it in the front of my face. <laughs> then we've got the loose powder here. I have mine in 30. I'm going to get the pressed powder just so I can compare it for you and see if it's the same. Let me know if you know if it is. Um, this works best when you use the puff and you push it in. I just noticed loose powders do better with a puff in general. So I use it for that and then I'll go and finish with something like this right here. So have the bronzer, the Le Beige bronzer. As I get more tan, it's harder and harder to see on me. But when I haven't been in the sun, this actually works quite well on my skin. It's very subtle bronzer. Oh, look at my hair after a couple hours. Okay, <laughs> I have various lipsticks and formulas. Actually, don't think I have that many, even though I have a lot. I think I have more of these than anything else, but I have some traditional lip products. So starting with the Rouge Coco Flash, I have a couple of these. I have some Rouge Cocos here, and I also have more Rouge Allures than anything else. And if I can pronounce the names, I will. Otherwise, I will just say the numbers. This right here is a Rouge Coco Flash 154. Rouge Coco Flash 132 Flushed. This is a Rouge Coco in 496 Tendress. This is a Rouge Allure Velvet in 617 Camellia Grenat. This is a Rouge Allure Velvet in 58 Rouge V. And this is actually the shade I'm wearing today. This is a Rouge Allure in 637. This is a Rouge Allure 107 or beige. Rouge Allure 127, Rouge Dor. Rouge Allure 607, Camellia Rouge Metal. And this is Rouge Allure 192, Profond Dieu. I just have a few like liquid, well, aside from the other ones, liquidy lip type products. So I have a Rouge Allure 
ink <laughs> in rosy brown. I also have a few of the Rouge Allure Lacs. I've got these, and then I actually got a really beautiful deluxe sample of one. Really vibrant color in a really stunning shade. And then this was mixed in. It's an eye product though. This is a Ombre Premier Lac in 28 Desert Wind. So it's an eye product. So I will show you all of those swatched. This is the ink in Rosy Brown. This is Rouge Allure Lac in 64. This third one is the Le Rouge Lac in Still, and that would be number 62. This is the Le Rouge Lac in 80. I haven't worn it yet, but it looks really pretty. And then this is the eye product right here. This is 28 Desert Wind. I think we're finally at the last products. Now I do have all of the eyeliners, um, but that in itself is an entire video because there are different levels of shimmer in them. Here's just a handful of them, but I do have all of them, or at least the ones that are available in the US, and I've done close-ups of them and um, flashlight swatches so you can see the particles in there, if they're shimmer or not, how big they are, how small they are. So definitely head over there, I'll link it below if you wanna see all of the eyeliner swatches. Cause I think I did a much better job there than I would do here cause I have so many other things in this video, but go ahead and watch that one. I do love all of their eyeliners, but they're not exactly created equally. I have several of these Le Rouge duos. Uh, so I will swatch them for you. I don't have them all. Actually, I have another one in that box with the other um, eyeshadow palette and the blush that I need to do for March. But I did have a question one of you asked me for an everyday color and I'll show you Endless Pink in a minute. That is my all-time favorite everyday color. I need a new one. That's how much I've used it. But this person said they are more cool tone. So I don't know if Endless Pink would work for you because it's got a nice warm undertone, which is why I love it. So I was trying to find like a cool counterpart to that and maybe light rose, I don't know. Let me know if you're cool toned and which one you love to wear every day because my everyday, like I said, is endless pink. But let's go ahead, I'll show you, I've swatched them all, I'll go ahead and show you. Five seven darling pink, one six six timeless beige, six nine tender beige, one five four intense caramel. Four zero light rose. One seven four endless pink. Four three sensual rose. One five six intense rosewood. One eight zero passionate red. This is Endless Pink, it's the one I've used almost all the way up, so that's why it's a little bit thinner, but that's my favorite one. Okay, and that is it. So it's been over two hours, I've gone through everything, and I hope that I was able to help you with color selection. In case you were wondering, I will rank my palettes. I know that's going to be a question, because I love that idea, I actually had that request previous to this, so now that you've seen them, I will rank my palettes. Let me know if you want me to rank anything else. I'd be happy to do that, but let me know if you have any questions about anything that you saw or anything I can help you with. And let me know what I'm missing. What are some things that are essential Chanel items that I don't already have that you think I should have? I'd really appreciate that. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other, stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.